is going to be about dopamine and the art of focus. Really, really important topic. I don't think it matters what your goals are in life. You should listen up to this. Give me 10 minutes and I'll explain to you how to significantly improve your life in less than two weeks. No matter how successful you think you are, I still think there's something you can learn for this. So um, in order to sit down and focus for hours in a row or even one hour and just pay attention to one task in spite of getting bored, in spite of it being challenging, in spite of getting the urge to eat something sweet or call somebody, check your text, check social media, the real winners in life are not like this. Most people basically now have like a learning disability and I don't mean that insensitively or to offend anyone, it's just a fact. Our attention is so fragmented because for the last 10 years, we've all been holding this little cell phone and it's been pacifying us, making us think that we get some new novel stimulus every 0.3 seconds. So this switching that our brain is always going through is, is like so destructive for our ability to do deep, meaningful work. And I don't think this is anything groundbreaking or new that you probably haven't heard yet, but the part that I want to talk about has just been my personal experience over the last month, going from a place just plagued by addiction to all kinds of stuff and a complete inability to get productivity and efficiency out of myself, just absolutely crawling along at a snail's pace through the most basic simplistic tasks and being in so much pain while doing so because my brain had just been overloaded with dopamine for so long. My tolerance to it was so high that I needed so much stimulus to do anything, to feel any kind of energy or motivation to get off my ass. Um, the thought of doing some deep, challenging work that was going to require days, weeks, even months to see a reward from would be hard to get me to bat an eye, right? It's like, why would I build a business that's going to take three months before I see any return when I could just go on social media and get some fake dopamine right now, you know, see who's like this post and go check my texts and reply to three other people. And then let's go check Snapchat. And so the steps that I took to, to bridge this gap in the last month were incremental. So I, I just had this conversation with someone literally a few minutes ago, which is why I turned this camera on. I wish that I would have just got the raw conversation because anytime I try to re-explain something, it's never as authentic and organic as it was in the moment, but I still think there's some value in this for anyone listening, so bear with me. I think that there's like a scale of one to 10 in terms of how much dopamine you get from something. And Andrew Huberman, who's a pretty well-known scientist um, blowing up on social media right now because of his ability to explain things in plain English and make really complex subjects interesting and help us understand the, the benefit of paying attention to science and dopamine and regulating hormones in our body. He talks a lot about the amount of dopamine that your body or your brain gets from different things. He talks about like eating chocolate is two hits of dopamine and then checking social media is four hits of dopamine. Having sex is six hits of dopamine. I forget the scale, but he talks more at length about it. And I just wanted to talk about in my experience, you know, let's say like a 10 out of 10 dopamine hit would be like drugs, you know, extreme party drugs, alcohol, sex, combining all of it, being in some super stimulating party environment and just overindulging in everything. That's like about as high as you can get. Eight would be like doing a little bit less degenerate, illegal stuff, but still being in party environment still chasing women or, or vice versa if you're a girl watching this, um, you know, seeking fun, just purely seeking pleasure. There's no long-term reward to doing this. It's just short-term instant gratification. You didn't do any work to be having this fun. It's like you're just in a party and you're just flooded with dopamine. Six would be like, you know, socializing, maybe not in a party environment, but also not in like a business constraint like you're not talking about anything productive with your friends you're just literally at dinner reminiscing on old times and bullshitting about the future and you know what you're going to do you're getting dopamine from talking about a potential successful future and the business you're going to start or this million dollar idea you have but you're not doing anything about it so you're kind of still getting cheap unearned dopamine by just sitting here at this dinner um, chopping it up with a friend and socializing four would be like now we're starting to learn 
and maybe consume educational content, you still get a little bit of a hit from, um, you know, learning about a subject you're in interested in or taking a course to teach you a new skill like copywriting or email marketing or editing or graphic design. There is some dopamine in going through a learning process and seeing like, oh man, I could be in the future in two years if I really put my head down at graphic design, I could have X, Y, and Z you know, and a business for myself and employees. And that can be kind of exciting, but we're going down the scale from like completely unearned, um, maxed out dopamine all the way to the other end where you're getting very, very little dopamine, uh, from very meaningful stuff that can lead to success in the long term. I feel like I'm struggling to explain this as cohesively as I meant to and as articulately as I hoped I would. Um, but I'm just going to keep on rocking with it. Hopefully you guys can kind of pick up the pieces of what I'm talking about. It will make sense in the end. So, and again, I promise 10 minutes is the, the cap on this one. I won't go over. Um, a level two dopamine hit would be like not watching YouTube videos and still like kind of stimulating hyper edited short form content, but at least it's like a tip list of like four ways to lose shape, um, lose weight or like six ways to, you know, improve your mental health or eight ways to, you know, fix your golf swing. Like you're trying to learn about a problem you have and something that has some value to it, but you're still watching kind of like hype short form content that you're really not taking action on. You're just getting dopamine from the stimulus of the music and the fast cuts and thinking about this future version of yourself. But then the next level below that, you know, let's call it two dopamine out of 10 would be like learning in a, you know, reading manner, reading books. <laughs> it's, it's, there's no color, there's no music, there's no talking head, there's no B-roll and stock footage and editing, helping your brain visualize what your future is going to be like if you do these four steps. Now it's just literally a book or an online course of black and white text, and it takes a long time. It's not a six-minute video promising that you're going to drop 30 pounds in a month by doing these three steps that are super easy and you can do them right now. It's like more of a legit course explaining like, yeah, the science behind weight loss and exercise is this, and it takes you weeks to go through. And then as you start to incorporate, the point of me explaining this entire scale is to say that like I started, I removed, it wasn't all at once, like cut out every single bad habit in my life and just literally read a book all day every day and start working on my business um the pain of that in my opinion is like so great that most people just quit before they even get a chance to benefit but i kind of you know scaled out i cut out most of the the bad habits immediately and then started learning a lot but it was through youtube i was like hey man it's okay if you want to be watching these fast-paced youtube videos like at least it's something constructive at least you're not just like keeping up with your friends and watching you know, I don't watch the Kardashians, but I feel like that's the most common uh, phrase to use for like saying you're wasting your time, like, oh, you're watching the Kardashians. So at least I wasn't watching bullshit, right? I'm like starting to, to pay attention to some mature um, education-based content that relates to something I want to do in my life. And then zero out of 10 dopamine is like, you know, med meditating, you know, you're getting absolutely nothing. You're sitting there with your eyes closed in your own brain. You can't see anything. You probably can't hear very much. You can't taste anything. You can't, no one's, there's no touch going on. There's nothing you can feel. Like most of your senses are pretty much muted and you're just there listening to the voice in your head talk. And the reason for gradually removing and, and sliding down the scale from needing like 10 out of 10 dopamine hits to feel anything at all. And if you're not getting that, you're in a state of like misery and depression all the way down to needing zero out of 10 dopamine to feel fine and getting like a one or two dopamine hit to feel amazing, just as good, if not better, no, fuck that, definitely better than you used to feel at a 10 out of 10 dopamine high. In order to get there, you just need some time in the game turning down that dopamine, daily dopamine hits you're getting, you, you just have to turn it down gradually over the course of like, you know, you'll see a major benefit in one week. But you, in my case right now, it's been like, you know, six weeks of completely cutting out the worst of the bad habits and then gradually now getting to a place where the last like three, four weeks have been 
pretty damn dialed, but each day I'm getting even more dialed. And now I'm like, cause that for a while there, I was kind of trapped in this, um, entrepreneurial learning segment, but still kind of overstimulating through just more learning and more fast paced tip videos. And now I've like kind of just found two or three people I'm listening to and I'm in their courses and I'm taking daily action. I'm not just stuck here watching and listening to them and, and uh, doing nothing about it. It's like I learn whatever I need to learn and then I immediately implement it. And only when I encounter a problem with the thing I'm working on, do I go back and not search for new tips and try to find a better, quicker way to solve the problem. It's like, just, you know what you need to be doing. Go back to the education source that gave you these ideas in the first place. And now I feel like I'm a, a real problem. Like I wouldn't want to compete against myself. My focus is pretty fucking sharp and it's only going up from here with each day that I continue to have none of the bad habits and infuse more slow paced, you know, like walking in silence, exercising in silence, spending a lot of time doing one task at a time, setting the timer and saying, okay, I'm going to do this one thing, whether it's respond to emails, build out my future courses, write a script for content, edit the content, and that's it. My phone is locked away in another room and you cannot reach me unless you're a family member um, while I'm working on this. And that's how I'm running my days right now. My time is blocked out. I work on one thing at a time and only when I finish that one thing do I move on to the next thing. Even though many times throughout that one hour work block, I get distracted and think, God, I'd rather work on this because it'd be easier. God, what about I should check in with this person or I wonder if this person's called and it's like, nope, nope, nope. And with each day that I deny myself switching focus just whenever I want to, whenever I have the impulses, um, it's it's becoming fun. The high I used to get from higher dopamine activities, I'm now experiencing on a daily basis just from working. And this is like, this is when exciting things can happen. And all of a sudden, you set a new bar for fun. It's no longer like, God, the most fun thing I can think of doing is like, going out and getting hammered on the weekend with my buddies and reminiscing on what we did in 2016 and how awesome it was that one time we got fucked up and this thing happened. That doesn't sound fun to me anymore. And I definitely don't want this to sound like preachy or like I'm uh, condoning. Is that the right word? <laughs> I think. Uh, con or demonizing having fun with your friends. That's not it at all. Um, you may be coming to this video at different points in your life. And so for some of you, you might be like hearing every word I'm saying and nodding your head. And others of you might be like, fuck this guy. He's so much holier than thou. What's wrong with having a beer? Shut up, nerd. And it's like, I get it. I've been on both ends of that spectrum. Um, but for those that are unhappy with where they are, unhappy with their focus, not getting the deep work done that they know they can be getting done and coming short of their ambitions in life, um, this could be... This I'm, I would say without knowing you personally and your circumstances, I would say with greater than 80% uh, confidence that this is probably the majority of your problem, your inability to focus. And <laughs> it's my bedtime alarm. It's 9 p.m. and uh, everybody has wake up alarms, but I now also have a bedtime alarm telling me to like start my night routine get ready for bed. I'm trying to go to bed and wake up at the same time every day um, to one, get good sleep, and then two, let my circadian rhythm normalize and get used to the same thing every day. You start to function much better physically and mentally uh, when you do that. But to wrap out this video really quick, basically, um, oh, one more really interesting point. So doing hard things, doing things that suck that you don't want to do Example, taking an ice bath or a cold shower, exercising, like vigorous exercise, you know, um, losing your breath, doing some, some hard cardio or some heavy weightlifting. Um, any painful experience that's obviously beneficial for you, not like, you know, hurting yourself or anything like that, but any painful experience that is healthy and is good for you, going through that as soon as you get out of that painful experience, just baseline, like just existing, being alive and like sitting here in this chair is now heightened. You're now getting more dopamine just purely existing because you were just in a, a painful place and now your baseline 
of what amount of dopamine you need to take in to feel that like enjoyment and satisfaction and motivation to do stuff in life that has been changed. And so that's another reason why we want to do this in tandem. If we're trying to regulate our dopamine levels, turn down the knob on how much dopamine we need to feel motivated and energized to do work and focus. If we want to turn that down, which I've been explaining is pretty much the foundation of being able to do any deep, meaningful work in your life for an extended enough period of time to make progress and accomplish things. If that's our goal, we need to turn down the knob on how much dopamine we're letting ourselves get each day, like how much pleasure are we experiencing each day that we did not earn. It's okay to feel great. Like it's okay to have ice cream, but it's better if you do some work first. This can even be as simple as in the mornings I like to go walk to get coffee. I could just as easily make it downstairs at my house, but the act of having to do some minor bit of work to go get the coffee, just overcome a little bit of friction. Maybe it's kind of cold in the morning. It's better if it's raining. Um, I try to take advantage of bad weather and think like, good, this is great. I have some resistance to overcome, so I'm going to gain like discipline points and my baseline for dopamine, how much I need is going to um, lower, which is going to benefit me in the long run. So I like to go walk to get coffee in the mornings and you could apply this to anything you want. Park further away at the grocery store. Just like make, go out of your way to make your life a little bit harder in healthy ways, obviously. Don't ruin your life thinking like, oh, he said, make my life harder. It's like, you get the point. But if you can in tandem um, remove the overstimulating unearned dopamine, the parties and you know what your vices are. If you can remove those things, which are, first and foremost, the most important and are just destroying your brain's capacity to value deep, meaningful work. Cause it's like, why would I do that when I could just get an even higher high immediately from doing X, Y, Z that's one side of the coin. And then the other side of the coin is intentionally adding in super hard things and going through discomfort and pain and overcoming challenge on a daily basis, literally as often as possible. That's going to also lower the baseline of how much dopamine you need to find an experience enjoyable and to be motivated to have that experience again. Another really interesting example, Aubrey Marcus, uh, one of these, you know, mental health, health and wellness, fitness, all around, just total stud, very healthy guy. If you've never heard of him, look him up. Aubrey Marcus, love that guy. He just went on a six-day blackout retreat where couldn't see anything for six days. I think he wore a blindfold and <clears throat> I'm not sure the details, but he said that sensory deprivation of seeing nothing but black eyes open or closed, seeing no difference for six days, um, had him just broke down in tears as soon as he had the blindfold lifted and, and saw the sunset for the first time in six days. He was like, I just felt, I, I experienced so much joy and life seemed so beautiful even though it's the same sky I was just looking at six days ago, thinking like, yeah, you know, almost like knowing that we should say like, yeah, it's beautiful. And we all talk about it in society. Oh, what a pretty day. The weather's so great, right? But we don't really mean that as much as we could until we've seen what it's like to not have that. And then you realize like, wow, everything in life is fucking awesome. Just the most simple ability to taste, to smell, to see to feel, you know, feel touch and then to have senses and emotions. It's like all of it, the, the human experience is unbelievably beautiful. And unfortunately, especially in Western society, but really globally now, we are drowning in dopamine and are just distracted every 0.3 seconds by social media and the fast paced world we live in to where we have kind of been robbed of the experience of life like how beautiful just simple day-to-day -day life can be we all are constantly seeking more and higher highs and it's not that you can't do any of these things that I mentioned but the danger is when you start to abuse your dopamine receptors and flood them with too much too quickly and you don't give them time to rest and break or you don't have enough hard habits in your life to counter some of the easy unearned dopamine you're getting, you get in a bad place really quickly. And as I kind of mentioned earlier in the video, I, I don't know what else to equate it to other than trying to do some kind of work or learn something with a learning disability. Like just 
completely incapable of focusing on something other than really fast paced edited TV shows and content, like to do anything that's going to change the world or change your life for the better. You got to be able to just sit down and knock out work that is challenging and you have to overcome problems and push through obstacles and you can't just give in to each impulse um, that you have to, to eat and take breaks and do whatever because your brain is going to be chirping at you every single time you get just the slightest you know bit of boredom and the longer your pattern of always giving in to those impulses the harder it's going to be to break so this is hard this is like this is the an important topic to discuss and I can definitely make more videos on it in the future that are more planned out and scripted. This one is just purely off the cuff. I thought it was something I should share, but this is something I'm like super big on because it's, it's the thing like until you gain control of your yourself, have impulse control and the ability to like get yourself to do the work you know you need to do and avoid doing the things that you know you shouldn't do. Like it's not a, it's not really a matter of knowledge anymore, right? Like we know, what's bad for us and what's good for us based on our particular goals in life. And we still don't abide by that lifestyle. You know, we have the best intentions and we mean to, but how few people are actually achieving exactly what they want to achieve in life and building dream lives and doing the things that they want to do. Very few people, right? It's, this is, this is the minority that are living the way I'm describing. And this is some valuable stuff. Like, Taking an inventory, personal inventory of what your high dopamine activities are that are unearned and cutting them out one by one. You don't have to do it all at once, although some people may prefer just the Band-Aid ripoff methodology. You know yourself better than I know you and what you're going to respond well to. But the point here is to build momentum, right? And have some successes early on and be like, yeah, you know what? I did quit habit X and I did quit habit Y and like I do feel a little bit happier just all day like just being outside or going for a walk is like a little bit nice and enjoyable and little by little you just turn down all the other dials basically try to create as much boredom as possible in your life when not working on something constructive so don't give yourself these little freebie cop-outs of like you know this one may sound a bit extreme to you guys but i found it useful in my experience like listening to music like driving places or like going to the gym, listening to music, that's like a huge dopamine hit once you start phasing down the really extreme ones, like all the partying and, and girls and drugs and stuff. Once you cut that out, even just music is like, you know, you're kind of flooding your brain and you would be better served, at least in this initial like break down your dopamine tolerance phase. Drive in silence, walk in silence, you know, a, a way to bridge that gap would be like infuse educational content and learning stuff and podcasts and more long form videos rather than short form, quick four minute tip videos. Like, you know, that's a good way to bridge the gap. But ultimately, um, once you've learned what you need to learn to execute and take action to build your dream life, which doesn't take that long in this modern day and age, you can pretty much YouTube and Google anything you want and there's some sick people out there doing it and they're probably making courses on how they did it and you can probably buy it for less than a thousand bucks. So once you've got a grasp on that, even just the first step to take to change your life and do what you want to do to build out your dream life, take it and don't get stuck in this like education ecosystem where you never do anything but just keep learning and oh, I'm going to read 52 books this year and learn so much like Again, this is much better than completely wasting your time and being distracted with bullshit, but as soon as you've got what you need, act on it. You know, it might be better to just read five books this year and like actually implement them or read them each a couple times or take notes on them. Better yet, record YouTube videos trying to summarize them and other people can benefit from it while you are also um, increasing your mastery of the subject matter by being able to vocally articulate what it is you just read and learned and how you're implementing it into your life and what your experience with that was. Side tangent for another time. But um, anyway, yeah, that's it. Hope it helped you guys. If it did, subscribe for more. Like the video, drop a comment with future ideas. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Peace.